We talk about mini PCs all the time, but we usually focus on like the crazier expensive stuff like the i7. And I think that's a little sad because the i5 sits in a spot where I think most people could be using the i5 instead of some of the more expensive stuff and not even noticing it. And I was able to procure a fine specimen for this. This is the Peloton H04. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not gonna be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code, click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25, hit apply, and that price comes down. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly. Windows 11 Home. And we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here. Go to your user center. Click on My Purchase Orders. Just View, Keys, and Codes. And you can just copy and paste your key. Hit Start. Type Activate. Click on Activation Settings. Paste it in there. Click on Next. And you will be activated. So head on over to whokeys.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. Now, when I first took this out of the box, I immediately noticed that the machining was very nice. Metal parts all the way around the sides, uh, RGB as well. And you can toggle the colors with a button, a physical button on the side of the unit. So that's pretty cool. The style of this is very industrial and clean. I personally like the way it looks, but it's up to you. So you take a look at it and see if it looks like something. I'll tell you one thing, it feels very substantial in your hands. Now this features the i5 12450H. You got 16 threads in total with this. The maximum frequency is 4.4 gigahertz. And one thing that's interesting about this is, um, you know, a lot of games and a lot of programs don't require a gazillion threads. And this is very similar in speed to the more expensive i7. So like that's why I was saying a lot of people are not really going to notice much difference at all between the i5 and the i7. So, you know, I talk about the i7 a lot. For most people, I would probably recommend this, especially if you're like wanting to save a couple dollars and still have a lot of speed because you can do a lot with it. All right, let's go through some of the specs on this, and then I'm going to do a bunch of testing. So you got four performance cores, and those are really beefy performance cores, 12 megabytes of cache, and four efficiency cores. Now, the performance cores are hyper-threaded, gives you eight threads, four more threads, 12 threads in total. So you can get in a few different varieties. This one has a 512 gigabyte uh, M.2 on the inside, and then we have 16 gigabytes of RAM. As far as the RAM goes, I think for most people, 16 gigabytes is going to be fine if you're playing games, doing office work, even doing some editing. Uh, 4K editing will work just fine. If you're doing extensive stuff like adding all kinds of effects, or if you uh, want to run a bunch of virtual machines, you might need more RAM, but for most people, 16 is going to be okay. Now, right on the front, this does have USB 4, and USB 4 will allow you to hook up like an external graphics dock. So if you wanted to play AAA games, because this is not like a AAA gaming computer, but if you wanted to play like some AAA games or some new games, you could plug this up to a graphics dock, put a full-size graphics card in there, and be good to go. And one of the things that's interesting about Peloton, and I didn't actually know this because I, I don't see their products that often, but they make everything. They make power supplies, they make graphics cards, and they make computer parts. So, you know, they've pretty much been able to put all this together. The graphics is the Intel Iris XE, which is like the higher end graphics. Uh, we'll do the tests on that in just a second, but I'll say this, you can play most of your back catalog and a lot of emulators and ROMs. I would not recommend this for like brand new AAA games with all the effects and filters and everything else. The memory in this is DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. You got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2. Comes with Windows 11 Pro out of the box. It's the size 136 by 128 by 52 millimeters. All right, looking at the front, you see that USB 4 there, and that's what you can plug up to an external graphics dock, or you can also plug that up as a display port and you know run an extra monitor. You got an audio jack right there, that's combo headphone microphone. The USB in the front are USB 3.2 Gen 2. In the back we have two USB 2.0, which is fine for your mouse, keyboard, extra controllers, whatever. The HDMI will do 4K 60 hertz, and the display port will do 4K 60 hertz as well. Fancy stuff. Uh, and then we also have 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And we have two of those. I love seeing a, a unit like this that's in like a lower price category that's just loaded with ports. So you can hook up lots of monitors and two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports means you can run servers, you can do all kinds of things with that. All right, let's talk about the RGB and then we'll take it apart. So as you can see on the side here, we've got a little button and that'll let you cycle through several different RGB modes. We don't have to go into the software. We don't have to do anything. There's a physical button that allows you to turn on, off, and change the settings with the RGB. 
and I think it looks pretty cool, especially if you find a setting you like and it goes with that like industrial design they have. Looks pretty good to me. Let's take off the hood and see what's going on under there. Pretty easy to take off the hood. You don't even need to remove the feet. It just a few screws and you open it up and there you see we have an extra spot for an M.2 and that'll go over top of your little Wi-Fi device, which is nice to see there because that's also replaceable if you wanted to upgrade that in the future. Wi-Fi 6 is already in there, but you could, you know, install something else if you wanted to. I mean, if you really, really wanted to, I probably wouldn't, but why not? So we do have some extra expandability options there under the hood. All right, let's put this through the paces and test. And then when we're finished with that, I'll tell you what I would use this for and who I would recommend it for. I want to show you something right now. So a lot of people think that you need an i7 CPU to do video editing. This is 4K footage of me digging around in that box for 20 minutes. I'll do it at, at full 4K resolution. You know, this little window doesn't need to be 4K. It's kind of stupid, so, but whatever. I'm going to do it anyway. So there we go. You can see we can scrub around. We can play, it plays the 4K footage just fine. And uh, let's do that cross dissolve. Okay, i5, 100% you can edit 4K video on this. Now uh, we can still do 22.3 FPS in Unigen Valley running at 1080p. And that is on the high setting. The final score is 931 if you want to check your system at home. All right, superposition, uh, the FPS minimum, 9.74, and the average of 11.30. So again, this is not a gaming PC. 1510 is the overall score, and this was run at 1080p medium. All right, our Geekbench single core score is 2179. Remember, we have the performance cores, and we have the efficiency cores, and those are separated. So the multi-core score is 7292. And you can scroll down here, see all the details, and... You can pause if you want to see any particular test. All right, there's that. Now the OpenCL score, which is the GPU performance, 7814. I'll scroll down and let you see all of the different individual tests. All right, let's look at Cinebench R23 and take a look at the single core performance here. Just jumping all over the last generation i7s. So the new stuff, the single core performance is great. Now when you move over to the multi-core score, it's gonna be good, but not as crazy as some of the other stuff, because remember we have a combination of the efficiency cores and the high performance cores that are hyper-threaded. So uh, it's somewhere in the upper middle area. In fact, this is faster than, look at that, <laughs> faster than some of the i9s from a couple generations ago. So this is still absolutely no slouch when it comes to CPU performance. All right, it's time to test out the heat and the noise. So I've got 8064 running right here. Yes, indeed. Click on the fire and we are going to do a full on stress test. I'm also going to be monitoring this with HW Info 64. So we can see what's going on, see all the details here. And we can even monitor the voltages right over here. So if you're curious to see what's going on, we can watch all that right here. And then I'll also test the audio or the sound that's coming out of this in just a second. So we'll let it run for 15 minutes. All right, looks like I let it go a little bit too long, but we are just kind of hovering in the high 70s right here, as you can see. Let's just have a look at hardware info. It'll tell us what the max was. And it looks like it peaked at 87, but that's probably like a brief second before the fans ramp up. I see that with a lot of CPUs. They peak up high and then, you know, stay somewhere reasonable. As far as the audio goes, let's take a sound sample, shall we? Excuse the desk. I'm like working on something right now. So, yeah. 47.3. The uh, room is around 40 to 42, depending on what's going on. So it's not an extremely quiet room. This sounds uh, slightly like an airplane while you're flying, but very, very low, like you know, nowhere near as loud. It's got, but it has that sort of high pitched whir sound because of the small fans. It's not unpleasant, doesn't ramp up and down, but you definitely can hear it. 47.3 decibels. All right, so what would I use this for? Well, I like the fact that it has 12 threads. I would probably use this as a virtual machine box, put Proxmox on it because you have those two 2.5 gigabit NICs. That's going to give you a lot of bandwidth and allow you to, you know, assign each NIC to a different virtual machine if you wanted to, or like create a couple different groups and have it all assigned that way. So that's probably what I would do. You could install a bunch of virtual machines on this. The i5 is plenty powerful. 12 threads is going to give you plenty of stuff to work with. You might need to put a little more RAM in there if you're installing some really heavy VMs. As it is, I think you'll, you know, I think you could do a pretty good job uh, installing some some VMs on here. Otherwise, I would probably use this as a Linux desktop or a media uh, machine or an emulator machine for like my living room. But there's all kinds of other, you know, like that's my brain. There's all kinds of other applications like Office and whatnot. So I think it's really well made. And I think um, from now on when it comes to like i5 versus i7, I'm going to start leaning a little more toward the i5 because it's really close in performance to the i7. It's less expensive, makes more sense to me. And um, if you want to do like crazy gaming and stuff, 
just get an AMD. That's they are much better when it comes to playing modern games. Playing your back catalog, playing some MOBAs or whatever, you'll be just fine on the i5. But you know, full on AAA games, uh, you know, Peladin has a really good deal right now on a 7850HS machine. So have a look at that. But otherwise, I think this is a good machine and it's really well made. So cheers, Peladin. Great machine. Thanks for sending it over. So here's what we got going on over here. Ooh, that's huge. Let me just make it a little smaller. These are on sale. Everything's on sale. So not everything, but these and these still on sale. So we got the keyboard and the mouse still on sale, 20 bucks. I'm not gonna sell this too hard. I love it. It's uh, the poppiest membrane keys I've ever felt and it's water resistant. And then we also have our mouse flawless sensor. And to me, it feels, let me show you here. It's all this junk on my desk. It feels a lot like an Intella mouse, like the old school, not quite, but I kind of wanted that sort of size and shape. And I think I did a pretty good job when finding, finding the mouse to, to make. So anyway, see you all in the comments. Mm -hmm.